So you've got to question yourself, why are you actually doing this? And the only question should be is one, to get a better lifestyle, to get freedom, and to obviously make a profit. You're not here for excitement. Sure, certain times it might become exciting and what have you, but you must not be doing this because you think it's the in thing to do. Um, you know, it's like a few years ago, everybody became a property developer. You know, every program on TV, do your house up, do this, do that, look at them now. And, you know, you went to a dinner party or whatever, everyone's talking about the stock market or what have you. We're in a business which I believe is ethical. We can carry on making money regardless of whatever happens. But at the same, same time, as I say, we're not here for excitement. This was a very profitable trade for us. And it was interesting, again, we said that this was profitable. And then we had Bear Stearns a few months later, which is even more profitable. Did this come out as a shock? Well, to some people watching the news, it may have come as a shock, but anybody just using simple, very, very simple chart, we saw the trouble. We saw the trouble ahead with Northern Rock. We saw the trouble ahead with uh, Lehman, with Bear Stearns. Because contrary to popular belief, the hole in the ceiling, yeah, that starts out small and then gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that's what happens with these banks. They start leaking or companies. They don't, a good company doesn't go bad overnight. I'm sure it might happen occasionally, that, but that's like a, an outside event. Even Enron, okay, if some of you remember Enron, if you look at the Enron chart, it starts showing problems. And there was a certain hedge fund that I actually had some money in. And I started seeing the problems and I got my money out and it's got a lot worse since. Okay, so I gave them a couple of months where they went wrong and then I said, I don't like this anymore. And I, I pulled out. So it, Northern Rock didn't fall like from 15 pounds or 20 pounds to 50 pence in one day. Now things happen quickly, there's no doubt about it. And as you know, markets fall much quicker than they rise. Always think of it like a building. It takes years to build a building. How long does it take to blow it up? So you can, you know, you can demolish it probably in a day. This is interesting, the pyramid. Some of you heard of pyramid scams, okay? And a lot of the time, the stock market can be com you know, compared as a pyramid scam. Um, and you think, Vince, how do they get away with some of the stuff they get away with? Well, in the next few years, regulation might toughen up a bit. There's a lot of money involved in Wall Street and much of that money somehow finds its way into politics. And when you've got politics and money together, then the rules can be bent any way they want to be bent. So this is the complete price cycle. This will never change. Okay? The company will change, the name will change. Next year it will be soya beans, this year it was oil, last year it was gold or whatever. But, you know, there'll always be something different, or the Nasdaq shares. It starts off with disbelief. Okay? Disbelief basically means that nobody believes it. Um, we've had no, nobody's talked about gold for 15 years. Yeah? Gold's bobbing along at 250 um, an ounce. No new gold mines have opened. It's just basically, no, you know, no one's talking about it. Then we, talk, we get into the belief phase. And that's basically when Everyone now starts to believe that we're going to run out of oil tomorrow. And then we get total belief. Whereas if you don't buy oil now, Goldman Sachs says it's going to be $250 by this afternoon. Yeah, so you've got the mania, you've got the crowd, and everybody's getting in as, as much as they can. Then, of course, that's where Goldman Sachs sells out, of course, because now they've told you all to buy a 250 a barrel. That's where they've started going short. You now get the disbelief on the starts going down, saying, no, no, I still, you know, I don't believe it. It's, you know, oil's going to be here. Everyone needs oil. Yeah, they do, but not at 150 a barrel, they don't. So you get the disbelief until, of course, the cycle finishes again at belief. Now everybody believes that you shouldn't touch an oil share. What happens next? A lot of nothing goes on, and then we start all over again. So it's just a cycle, it just keeps going round. Bubbles always end in the same way. Okay, and this is not new, I showed this same chart last year, and people said, ah, oh, oil's different this time. Yeah, of course it's different this time. 
So we get the takeoff, we get the bear trap. Because this is what you've got to understand. In any bull market, okay, and you might want to write this down in case you don't already know it, you will get severe down moves. But it doesn't mean that the bull market is over. And any bear market, which the stock market, in my recognition now, pretty much globally, is in a bear market, but notice we'll get some sharp up moves. Why? Just to shake everybody around a little bit. So understand that, what we call traps. We get the media, we get the enthusiasm, we get the greed, we'll get the new paradigm. You'll always hear somebody say, it's different this time, it's new, everything's changed. And there's a great little audio clip on your resources CD from a guy called Art Cashin at UBS. And he was talking about something from the 70s. Um, and you'll see how relevant it is. If you want to go back, some of you might have heard of a book called Popular Delusions and the Madness of the Crowds. And it's all about the South Sea bubble and tulips and various things like that. If you didn't know, years ago, tulips basically were being traded and you could buy a house uh, with one tulip at one stage. So do you see how the product changes, but the mania doesn't? Because people don't change. And then obviously you get the fall. And notice, you know, this isn't to scale, but the downside is always quicker normally than the upside. The upside takes a bit longer to take off, but the downside normally comes. And then we get what's called a reverse to mean. Now, for oil prices at the moment, that's about $50 a barrel. $50, $60 a barrel is what I call the mean, is the long-term trend. So this is one barrel of oil at $40. I'm not saying it's always going to go to $40, but I'm just using this example. And this barrel costs $145. Can you spot the difference? Anyone see any difference between those two barrels? There ain't. It's the same barrel, isn't it? There's no difference. So why is that barrel 145 when that one was 40? Because it's all the mania and the crowd. And people say, it's supply and demand, Vince. Don't you know that, oh, please, tell me that the oil price went from 50 to 100. This is an interesting stat. And if you look at that little chart, you've got this in your workbook as well. What shape is that in? Pyramid, yeah? Does that not just look like that pyramid I just showed you earlier? Disbelief, belief, total belief, new paradigm. 